1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We'll present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was, but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. Here now the news for March 15, 2024. According to Bloomberg, the Disney Board of Directors currently has four Disney executives in mind to succeed current CEO Bob Iger. The four people in the running are co-chairman of Disney Entertainment, Dana Walden, chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, Josh Tomorrow, co-chairman of Disney Entertainment, Alan Bergman, and chairman of ESPN and sports content, Jimmy Pitaro. Per Bloomberg sources, who has to remain anonymous, all four of the candidates are getting time with Iger with the intent of showing them how he does the job and exposing them to areas of the company that are outside of their expertise. Bloomberg also shared that Disney may appoint a chief operating officer or president before the end of Iger's tenure as part of the transition. The later note uh, that a new CEO will not be chosen by the end of 2024. In July of 2023, the Walt Disney Company Board of Directors announced that Bob Iger, who originally signed back on as CEO through December 31st of this year, had extended his contract as CEO through December 31st of 2026. Late last year, media executives listed Dana Walden as one of two top picks they predicted would take over for Iger. Um, if I may talk on this quickly, you know, personally, I want Josh tomorrow. That's who I want to be CEO, right? I, I think Josh has shown uh, that he knows the Parks and Resorts division and we're on the rebound with it. Um, look, I know at its heart, I think a lot of people consider it to be a media company it is... Um, it's a movie company, it's a movie studio at its heart, but, you know, I, I think if you understand how to run a creative section of this business, I think you, I think the rest will work. I think you can have some great people at the top of the studio that make the right decisions. I, I think Josh is the right choice. I, I, I don't know that I want someone running the Walt Disney Company that, that continues to not understand um, the park segment. Like, Bob Chapek didn't understand the park segment, and that just got worse uh, with his time, but, uh, you know, these might all be great choices, but I, I, I'm rooting for Josh. And I know, look, there's some of you that get in the comments and you're like, oh, Josh hasn't done anything and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little mean and a little honest for a moment. Um, you guys didn't know when Bob Chapek was bad either. Cause I remember, you know, doing this show and, and the website post in 2015, 2016, 2017, the writing was on the wall that things were going to get bad under Bob Chapek, and everyone said I was crazy. I saw how that worked out. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with my instinct again. I think the parks are on the rebound. I think you're going to see plenty of announcements and plenty of dirt start moving soon enough. And I think it's going to be all stuff that is for the better, all positive changes and additions. And, um, you know, in, in the short amount of time since Chapek left, I think we have seen you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, and there's certainly things that haven't improved. 
Um, but as far as like the guest experience, I think a number of things have improved already. You know, reversing the parking fees, trying to figure out a better way to operate this reservation system and, and park passes and those sorts of things, dining reservations. We're, we're seeing things go in a, in a decent direction, right? Like, obviously there are some things we'd all like to change or remove with Lightning Lane or bring back Magical Express, things of that sort. And maybe those will come with, with time, but at the very least, I will say, I think we're in a much better place than we were under Chapek. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing that continue. We'll see what happens. We still got some time between now and Iger's departure, and we'll see how Parks and Resorts shakes out between now and then. Walt Disney World has shared a first look at the new Main Street USA cast member costumes coming to the Magic Kingdom. Disney shared the following. Are you ready? Cast are, sm are all smiles as they prepare to enter their new Main Street USA costumes era. Can we, can we stop doing these Taylor Swift things? It's, it's too much. Here's a sneak peek at some of the costumes they'll soon be debuting. Not only do these turn-of-the-century Disney fits keep function and comfort top of mind with lightweight, breathable fabric, they're also made from recyclable material uh, that help keep the environment in mind, too. The costumes are primarily in shades of pink and blue with tan, gray, and white basics. Fittings are reportedly starting soon for cast members, but a debut date for the new costumes has not been confirmed at this time. I got to go say goodbye to the old Main Street. I know it's a weird thing to say, um, but those Main Street cast costumes that are currently in use have been there my entire life. I don't know how far back they go. I think they're 80s. They've definitely been there my entire life. So I'm going to miss like some of the stuff with the brooches, like the, the ladies' costumes with the brooches and such. Um, I'll miss the weird brown and blue vest, and uh, I'm going to miss that stuff. Uh, this stuff looks, you know, at, at least thematically, it's, it's in period. The materials are a little reflective and such for the time. I don't know how I feel about it, but I understand wanting comfort and sustainability. I get that. Um, so I guess we're getting the best of both worlds, but man, I'm really going to miss the current Main Street costume. I'm sure anyone who works there on Main Street will not miss their costumes, but man, thinking about it, I don't know if Tony's is one of those costumes changing, but man, the brooch and all that, it's, it, they're such cute costumes and they fit the area so well. The new female costumes, though, the, the dress and stuff reminds me a lot of Paris. I don't know why. Paris Main Street vibes for sure. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is inching towards its summer 2024 opening at the Magic Kingdom with updates to the vehicles and the exterior of the attraction. The log vehicles that will be used for the ride were being tested with water dummies this week, uh, specifically on March 14th. Together, 28 logs were being tested, some with water dummies, some without. The attraction will reportedly have 48 logs when fully operational. When the logs were at the base of the drop, we could see that they were filled uh, to the 150-pound line. Uh, the jugs of water are meant to simulate the weight of humans to test the function and safety of the ride vehicles while in motion. Additionally, the vehicle's lap bars have gotten a makeover. We spotted new orange foam on these along with new black foam along the dividers. The vehicles themselves have been refurbished from Splash Mountain. The logs could uh, be seen plunging down the 50-foot drop. We could smell the signature bromine, uh, the water scent that uh, guests grew used to while uh, Splash Mountain was operating. Elsewhere on the attraction's exterior, more flowers appear to have been added to the side of the mountain to the right of the tree. Just days ago, we noticed some red and orange faux flowers, and now even more have been added, and they're creeping right up against the fence. Crew members were working all over the exterior of the attraction when we were there. Here, a crew member was feeding electrical wires into the barn, which guests will enter as part of the queue. Thanks for a report from NOLA.com journalists. Uh, a journalist that was given a tour of the attraction while under construction, we know that this barn will house the offices of Tiana's Foods. The windows and doors for the former Splash Mountain gift shop, the Briar Patch, are blocked to obscure guest views of the inside. Again, um, nothing's been said about what's happening with this space. We assume they're going to turn it into a Tiana store, but we'll have to wait and see. The exterior of Communicore Hall at Epcot looks closer to completion every day, although we don't yet have an exact opening date for the hall and plaza. Crews have added more paneling to the awning around the plaza, and the hall's mural features more Epcot references. A pair of long shade structures jut out from Communicore Hall around the plaza. The edges of uh, two shades are now covered in yellow weatherproof sheathing, and crews have recently added metal supports and paneling to the edges. 
There are alternating flat black panels on one edge of the taller shade. Uh, each square panel is slotted between two supports. Crew members on the other side of the shade appear to be doing electrical work. Wires and new sprinklers hang from the ceiling. Some lights have already been activated on the ceiling as well. We previously reported on the Mickey and Friends mural visible behind the Spaceship Earth-inspired walls of Communicore Hall. Crews have completed more of the mural, which was first revealed at a cast member event last August. Behind the wall, we can now see the Dreamfinder's Dreammobile from the original Journey into Imagination. The silhouette of the airship is set against an orange diamond pattern and a yellow stripe. Though not visible behind the walls, we know that Figment is featured on the mural not far from the Dreammobile. To the left is the Nova Corps Star Blaster from Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Other Easter eggs to be included on the mural include the World of Motion facade, the robot butler from Horizons, and a Probe Brava 229 from Body Wars. On the corner of this wall is Spaceship Earth, depicted as red with yellow-orange stripes, alluding to the pattern of its white triangle panels. Mickey and Minnie are just around the corner, along with another depiction of Spaceship Earth. And we saw crew members working on the mural further down, where it faces the journey of water inspired by Moana. Communicore Hall and Plaza will be the final element of the years-long Epcot reimagining, set to open this year. Communicore is named after the opening day extinct Epcot pavilions that were in the center of Future World. Uh, my guess is food and wine. We don't have a start date for food and wine yet, but I would guess uh, that's what they want to be ready for. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. Part of the flex space next to the Imagination Pavilion in Epcot uh, reopened with the Florida Fresh booth for the 2024 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, but the rest of the space remains behind walls and under construction. The construction walls and rolling planters were moved for the start of the festival. There's space around flower beds for the booth, cash registers, and a queue. As we can see from the Imagination Pavilion, the rest of the site is still an active construction zone. Crews have been focused on the half where Florida Fresh is located, and the other half is still a dirt site with wooden uh, frameworks. There are some paved areas in the center. Rebar and wood sticking out of the ground may outline future pathways. There is a curved pink concrete wall as well. Crew members were working in the back corner of the site near the restroom building, which is open. They appear to be working on foundations. Again, I would suspect this is going to open with food and wine in the summer. An effect on Journey into Imagination with Figment in Epcot has been fixed after being broken for many years. The water cooler in Figment's upside-down open house is once again bubbling. The effect has been broken for at least a few years, if not longer. Guests can see the water cooler on their right in the kitchen, the last room of the house. You know, uh, it's great to see this fixed, but on the other hand, just please get rid of this. Just get rid of this ride, please. We want a new Figment attraction. I'm, I'm praying in August we finally get this announcement. It, it is time. It has been time. Um, it is a shame that this is the longest operating version of this ride that has ever existed, longer than the original. Obviously, anything should last longer than that middle version did, but uh, it, it, it's time, Disney. Let's, let's go. Disney H2O Glow After Hours, the special ticketed event at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon, will return this summer. From May 25th to August 31st, guests can enjoy the late night event on select nights at the water park. The event takes place from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., uh, though guests with tickets to H2O Glow can enter Typhoon Lagoon beginning at 6 p.m. the night of the event. Tickets will go on sale March 22nd. Prices range from $60 to $85 per ticket. Uh, there's also annual pass holder pricing as well. You can read it all at www.nt.com. The returning event offers guests lower wait times with the park illuminated in neon colors. Guests can enjoy complimentary ice cream, popcorn, and select beverages. The event also features a DJ dance party and select Disney characters. I like this event. I don't know. At the $80 price, I feel like it's getting, it's getting a bit too much for, for how short it is, honestly. Um, but, man, Typhoon Lagoon at night is beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful park in the day. But it is gorgeous at night. So if you've never done it, I highly recommend. I think it's worth doing at least once. Speaking of swimming, 
A woman was seen swimming topless in the Sasagula River at Disney's Port Orleans Resort on March 14, 2024. The incident was reported in the PortOrleans.org Facebook group, and a video can be seen uh, there as well. Viewer discretion is, is advised as the video does, does contain nudity. Obviously, she was topless. While toplessness is not explicitly forbidden, guests are not permitted to be in public spaces at Walt Disney World in inappropriate or vulgar outfits. Guests reported the incident to cast members who informed them that technically there is no rule against swimming in the river. However, it is not advised to swim in any bodies of water other than the resort pools as they are not maintained for guest safety. The water in central Florida can contain dangerous wildlife such as alligators or various bacteria that are harmful to humans. Boats also travel down that river, which could create hazardous conditions. Um, she was trespassed, according to sources, so that's not surprising. Um, I don't think any charges were pressed, but nonetheless, uh, this is another weird one, folks. Another weird incident. I don't even know what to say about this one, but there you go. Patrick Warburton, known to Disney fans for being the chief flight attendant of Soren and the voice of Kronk in the Emperor's New Groove, recently surprised guests waiting to board Soren over California at Disney California Adventure. Disney shared a video and photos of Warburton appearing in person to guests waiting to ride the attraction. The original version of it has returned for a limited time during the Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. The safety spiel video featuring Warburton has played for over 20 years at Soren and Disney California Adventure, also at Epcot. A cast member introduced Warburton as the chief flight attendant, and the guests immediately recognized him uh, wearing his flight attendant uniform. He referenced the safety spiel, which had just played, by telling one guest, nice work, pal, and reminding another to store those little beauties, their mouse ears. After guests had boarded the attraction, Warburton referenced one of his most famous Kronk quotes from The Emperor's New Groove when he asked, Okay, has everybody pulled their yellow strap for the, uh, the safety belt? The uh, safety belt for safety. The safety belt chosen especially to make guests safe. The guest safety belt. Warburton told Disney, It's just magical to see how beloved Soarin' Over California still is after all these years. I can remember my first trip to Disneyland at the age of five, and I continue to be a huge Disney fan. So to be part of a Disney attraction that has lasted this long has just been such a sweet and wonderful thing for me. Getting to surprise guests today was super fun, and it's great to see the impact that this safety intro has made for the past 23 years and how people still love it. It was such a blast uh, getting to be the chief flight attendant for Soarin' Over California once again. Go watch the complete video on our website. The Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival runs through April 22nd. Of course, you can watch our great videos of the Food and Wine Festival. Eric and I tried everything new. Uh, there's a long form video where you can watch all our reviews or just check out our seven best and seven worst of the festival video as well. We also have those videos for the Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot if you haven't checked those out yet either. But um, there are no words to describe how much I would have freaked out if I was one of the guests that got to be here for this Patrick Warburton appearance. I mean, that's, I'm not the biggest Soren fan. In fact, I would say the only things I really love about Soren is the pre-show and the music. I don't really care for the ride. I don't think it's that great. Um, but man, do I love that pre-show. So I would have, I would have been in tears. What a cool thing. For those looking ahead to sail next summer, the Disney Cruise Line's summer 2025 itineraries have been released. Booking opens to the general public on March 22nd. Disney Cruise Line Castaway Club and select other affinity groups have access to early booking windows as follows. The Pearl Castaway Club members are Monday, March 18th. Platinum and Golden Oak and Club 33 members on March 19th. Gold Castaway Club on March 20th. Silver Castaway Club, Vacation Club and Adventure Insiders on March 21st. And bookings again open to all guests on March 22nd. You can see all uh, those itineraries at WDWNT.com. It's a long, long list that I, I don't have time for on the show, sadly. Meanwhile, Disney Vacation Club announced a five-night Western Caribbean member cruise on Disney Cruise Line's Disney Dream for August 2025. The member cruise will depart from Fort Lauderdale on August 2nd and return on August 7th. The Disney Dream is sailing, uh, the Disney Dream sailing is the first ever member cruise to stop at Cozumel, Mexico. Member cruises include commemorative keepsakes and special experiences tailored to DVC members, including exclusive onboard entertainment, uh, not available to other sailings. Bookings open on Saturday, April 13th of this year. On that day, member services will be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, exclusively for member cruise bookings and resort arrivals within five days of April 13th. DVC warns there may be longer than usual wait times. 
Member services will return to normal operations on Sunday, April 14th at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can call member services at 800-800-9800 or 407-566-3800. A 2024 Mediterranean member cruise will leave from Barcelona, Spain on May 18th. Guests on that sailing will receive exclusive prints of artwork by Brett Iwan, the voice of Mickey Mouse inspired by the Ports of Call. Real quick, I want to I want to make a brief announcement. Uh, my time in America is, is coming to a close for now. I'm going to be traveling to Japan shortly. Um, I believe I will be with you for Monday's show, and then uh, it is likely I will not be on another show for a little bit. So... Um, I just want to talk about a couple things. Number one, Stage 89. We have extended that early bird discount on the streaming ticket. It is now valid through the end of the month. So this is your last chance to be a part of history. This is the largest in-person gathering of Imagineers that any independent organization has ever put together. Never mind that, it is the most Imagineers in one place uh, that worked on a single project beyond the opening of said project ever. This kind of reunion has never happened before. So if you want to see all these, uh, all this unseen concept art, all the, hear all these untold stories, uh, or even be here in person and be a part of it, um, you know, registration windows are closing. So again, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to be able to join us in person, get your streaming ticket now for 10 bucks only through the end of March. Then it is going up to 1989. We're extending this uh, because, again, we want to make sure Everyone knows, no one's surprised when the price goes up on April 1st, uh, that's the point. But in-person registration, we are about, I'd say we're over half full for in-person registration now. So we have limited space here. When it's gone, it's gone. Um, I'm telling you, this is, this is not, no, look, I have nothing to gain from this, really. This is an event that's raising money for charity. I'm doing this just because I love doing these. I, I, as much as all of you, want to sit in the room and hear these stories and be a part of this, right? Um, but I'm telling you, this is a once in a lifetime thing. This will never happen again. I, I know 35 is a weird anniversary, but the stars have aligned, right? Enough people are, um, you know, uh, of a certain age, a retirement age. Some people literally just retired from Walt Disney Imagineering. And so the timing is right. You, again, this will never happen again. So please join us. All the information at stage89.com. Uh, click the early bird registration once you go to buy tickets for that $10 ticket for the streaming. Uh, reminder, you don't, only, you don't only get to watch it live on May uh, 4th and 5th. You also get it on demand for 30 days. And remember, again, all proceeds go to Give Kids the World Village. Again, in-person registration still available and discounted for WIGS members. But again, we expect to sell out eventually. So get to it, folks. Um, yeah, beyond that, I want to give a quick shout out for something we're going to be doing. As many of you know, we are expanding our office space. So we are moving all of our offices from this side of the building to the other side. And our museum space is greatly expanding. With a greatly expanding museum space, there are a lot of costs we're incurring. Um, that would be to build displays, to buy display cases, to paint, um, to replace walls. There is a whole lot of construction projects, Lucas and Jake and the gang, are embarking on while I'm in Japan. And in order to make that happen, uh, we kind of need some funds to do that. So what we're doing is, as I've been, um, I don't know if you guys caught this part of the story, but I also, am, my, my apartment lease is up. I gave up my apartment, so I'm gonna be moving to a new apartment in a couple months. Um, but in the meantime, my stuff is being moved into a storage space next door, the new office space. Uh, but as I've gone through my stuff, I have found hundreds of items that I am willing to part with in the hopes of raising funds to complete all the expansion projects we want to complete here at WDWNT Celebration. So I don't have the exact details yet, but I'm going to give you a save the date. Uh, and that's going to be next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, which would be, Jake, what's next Saturday's date? I don't have a calendar. 23rd? I think it is. Yeah, it's going to be March 23rd. It's going to start earlier in the day. We don't have an exact time yet. On Monday, I hope to give you an exact time. And I think over the weekend, if not Monday, we'll have the full catalog up. It's over 300 items, way over 300 items. Eric knows because he's filling out the, the spreadsheet right now and complaining about it. But <laughs> I'll be kind to Eric. Eric's going to be your host for a little while. Um, but 
Um, yeah, the hope is, again, we need some space. I don't want to begin with a new storage space and immediately fill it to the brim with stuff. Uh, and on the other side, again, it'd, it'd be great to have some extra money to do some really cool things um, in the new studio and museum space for when we uh, reopen on May 2nd. So uh, I'll give you all the details on Monday, but, but save the date uh, and, and please take a look at the catalog next week. There is a lot of great stuff from all the Disney different, all the different Disney parks around the world, the Disney Cruise Line, a, a lot of really cool stuff uh, that I'm clearing out. So stay tuned for more details on that. But I'll see you guys on Monday. I have one, one more show left before Japan. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support this show and the entire team behind it by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at Patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.